Hello and welcome back to the 2023 World Championships. You're watching Round 1 Back 9 coverage on Joe Mez Pro with Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colling, and Paul Ulibarri. And we had a pretty decent front nine, I would say, for our feature group uh, defending, well, we call him defending world champion, Greg Barsby, but we have actual defending world champion Paul McBeth here. We just like to kind of give Greg that extra credit, but coming out here in 2018, winning his world title, but four under for him. It's a good start. I think somewhere in that four to six range is a really good start, but two players managed to get to seven, Chris Clemens and Corey Ellis. A lot of scores right there at that five under number. Sure, love to take that. Ricky Wysocki, that bogey on seven, really slowed that momentum down. He was off to a pretty good start, four under through the first six holes, I believe. Hole 10, par three, 475, straight as she goes down the hill. You got these trees by the basket that you could hope to hit if you're coming in with a little too much heat, but I think that backhand mid-range for these guys is probably the prescribed play to have something that come in and settle into circle one. I think this is, when I think of this course, this is maybe the first hole I think of. Yeah, I think it's fair to call it the signature hole. I think a lot of guys um, will throw the fairway ah. or will throw the mid-range, but I also think the fairway driver kind of fits uh, the flight path a little bit more because of the force over option to sure. make that fairway a bit bigger. Paul kicked enough into the edge where he might be in danger of a tough scramble. And here's that flex play I was kind of talking about. If you mm. beat that, that, that had a nice little shape to it. Yeah. If you watched our front nine, then you'll recall Nate uh, giving you guys a little bit of a heads up that these guys know that they are not going to be able to complete their round due to some early thunderstorms as Ricky's drive. This is looking incredible. Oh, boy. Oh, ace run. That couldn't have been more than a foot from drawing metal. Oh, my. What a that, dream ace. What a dream ace this No would be. doubt. But now, because of the fairway driver play, he is deep, and that is playing pretty far. This is a nice flip. Uh, go in as well, I guess. I think this one has a chance to sit. Oh, man. That is really good. I believe Charlotte local and former amateur world champion Steven Jacobs aced this one recently. I give a shout out to him. Yeah, congratulations on that. Paul's going to have to work. That might not even be a very good angle to the basket. Low ceiling for sure. Maybe some branches in his way as well. And it was uh, kind of spreading around the good course shot. that 730 was going to be the Yes. The time that this thing got called, and they weren't going to have another idle wild situation. They're going to have a hard stop. I would assume that it is around seven fifteen local time is what for what we're watching. Oh. So these guys are probably looking to play maybe one to two more holes. Such a uh, Paul is going to drop the stroke here. It's going to take the bogey. But yeah, such a frustrating result for Ricky to throw such a good drive. And there's so many trees right there at the pin. You can just hit any one of them and stay close. But unfortunately, he does not. Meanwhile, Chris capitalizes on that great drive and takes the birdie. But where Ricky landed is a very common uh, collection point for all those good looking drives. It's so hard to get everything right, get the ceiling right, get the disc stability right, and then also pump the brakes right here under these crab apples. Every once in a while, you'll, you do get to see that. A few years ago, Eagle McMahon was laying down backhand rollers and he hit the pin and stayed parked. Unbelievable. That's right, shot. I remember that. Like, what a wild play just to take yeah. it down there somewhere and then just somehow hit the pole and get the birdie. I'll tell you what, if I was a bear, which I know there are some on this course, I would be hanging all over that tree right there because there are some yummy goodies on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I heard today that an actual bear stole the spotter's lunch on hole 13 oh, today. Boy. So, yeah, there's bears, there's bears in Black the woods. Bears around, yeah. Hole 11, par 4, 620 downhill. Eagleable. This one is reachable if you're willing to get aggressive with that backhand turnover. You'd like to just move something a little bit right off the tee. Try to stay in the middle. It's downhill the whole way. So a very birdieable hole. But it's also night. <laughs> Keep that. 
Oh, this shape is just phenomenal. Wow. wow. Yeah, sit, sit, sit. Go, go, go. Yeah, I go, think. go, go. Yeah, I was hoping that it wasn't going to hyzer too much, but that just... I think that's a mid-range. That was beautiful. He's going to have, what, little more than a jump putt yeah. to get down there onto the green. I've seen Greg go past the pin on this hole. Have you really? I have. Pretty aggressive line there. Overturned. Fortunate to kick down and roll back to the fairway. It should be a fairly easy scramble with an outside chance for the birdie still. Similar shot from Rick. Look yeah, at it. This just keeps fighting. going. This could get back to the fairway. Eh, not quite. It's not bad, though. Could have been worse. Yeah, not likely to birdie, but... He is Rick. We'll see if he can figure something out from there. Yeah, but for hitting that second grouping of trees and manage to kick forward, you'll take it. Paul doesn't quite turn this enough. Takes a big kick left and then down. Going to have some little gaps to deal with if he wants to bounce back from that bogey. Greg stands still forehand, early hyzer. Wow, full distance. Doesn't get the any break, though. That's one of those ones where you're like, okay, hit some, okay, okay, all the way through. Yeah. You know what? You can't you can't complain about that result, though. He's going to have nine two. He's gonna have a very Greg putt, like 45, 50 opportunity to do something. And Ricky out of position. He'll be scrambling. Great look here at what Macbeth is dealing with. Tough so, little gaps. Man, that, he is so good at those, isn't he? Yeah, he really Full is. Full commitment to really staying low and delivering the shot through the awkward stance. I feel like that was about as bad as it could have got for him, too. Yeah, it didn't. It the ground great. didn't do him any favors there. Look at this drive. Yeah, I'm surprised he's not forcing some kind of forehand Anheuser. This, but never mind, I'm not surprised by that. This is a funny hole because you can be way back, throw something that kind of gets through and you're in the circle, and you could have the best drive ever, and it's still a tough little upshot. You yep. get those guardians that kind of block you, and you have to earn a little 30-footer. Let's see if Just Rick has like that, that problem. Uh, yeah, it kind of fights around yeah. it, but you can see right there, the enemy at the gates are they're all over the circle. It will not be a bounce back birdie for Macbeth. See if how deep in the woods Greg ended up. Oh boy. Oh, quite deep. Worse than I thought. Down in a creek. Not only down in the creek, but how annoying is it right after it rains when you go into those leaves and they just yeah. drench you? You're just yeah. soaked. Ricky for the scramble par. He's in. He's on a bogey par streak there. That's yeah. not what you want this early in the tournament. You can, in the first couple rounds, take some par streaks, take a couple bogeys, but at some point you got to right the ship and start getting a lot of birdies in a row because you know with the field of 200 of the best players, yeah. somebody's doing it. Somebody is yep. just getting six, seven in a row at some point. And I think the group... Might have heard something or might not yeah. have. I think they are aware that this is going to be the last hole that they play. Okay. And that was Jeff Spring's voice in the background, probably letting the guys know that it's too dark. So we'll see you guys tomorrow at 7.45 in the morning is what they were telling them at that time. But we're not going to make you guys wait till 7.45 in the morning. We're going to bring you hole 12 right now. Unless by some amazing coincidence it happens to be 7.45 <laughs> in the morning where you are, we will make you wait. So yeah, back back to the AM. Shout out to you, Yuli. All you had was a 90-footer left is what I'm I told. Did, yeah, you had I had to get, get up early, get out there and grind through that, get yourself a par. Yeah, took us about uh, 38 seconds to finish our hole and then we were, we were <laughs> back. 30 minutes later, I was back in bed. But this is hole 12, par 3, 430 down the hill. This is a very specific shot. It reminds me a lot of, I believe it's hole 5. Is that right? Oh, no, no, six. 6. Yep, hole yep. 6. Just a straightened out version. Exactly. A little longer. Yeah, Chris has gotten this thing flipping up the whole way. And look at this back door route he finds. Oh, that's a dream shot right there. Beautiful. This one, for some reason, is just kind of an elusive birdie. Well, there's OB right behind it. Yeah. 
and it's it's right there if you get a little bit too aggressive and i think that can force you to do this right here although that is a nice little roll mm -hmm. i think it can make players overplay the left part of this hole a little bit yeah i saw a, what i thought was even a short shot go out of bounds deep so it's kind of really good. yeah it gets down there pretty fast sometimes and these ones on that, you know, if you get it on the right side, they can filter through. I like I like your chances on the right side more than the left. Yes. This is maybe a little heavy on Heiser, but... Maybe on speed, too. Has a chance to settle at the edge of the circle. Oh, that's some, that's some love. But look out. The OB line is right back there. He does stay safe. Greg, this looks great. Mm. Off the band, good effort from an awkward place. Oh, that got a little high. That needs to slow down. Paul's bid for birdie just right. And Chris is going to have to wait for a couple players to clean up their pars before he gets to his birdie look. Rick being first. And it's it's crazy. I mean, Ricky is on this long par streak right now, but it's a whole new day. So I wonder if he can change that momentum and convince himself to, or find, not convince himself, but find something deep down to get things going. Paul's on a similar streak. Honestly, I think they're on the same yeah. streak. Yeah. And it's just such a weird thing. This round, opening the world, you had a two-hour delay. That in itself is a mental reset. Yep. Come back out and do that for a couple more holes. Then you got the whole night playing quite a bit earlier than these guys are used to for competitive disc golf. It's, uh, it's testing people. Chris was trailing these guys by a lot after his double bogey back there on hole eight. But he's got several birdies now, and Greg's going to drop his first stroke of the round with that unforced error. That's a tough one. Tough one to swallow, for sure. But Chris, making good on his second chance, kind of second reset of the round. Hole 13, par 4, 570. This one follows the access road, sweeping gently right and downhill, and then into a very narrow tunnel for the last 100 feet or so. So your position on the drive is really important to allow you any kind of chance to access this last little narrow gap and push your way all the way back in there to the green. Backhand turnover, certainly an option, but I think probably the most common play here is going to be the power forehand, trying to push to that back edge and then drift right late get down in the area of that bridge it's a little bit early perhaps yeah hitting the big corner tree even if he gets around that tree there's i believe another one that it could potentially hit isn't there always there always is another one ricky going with the putter kind of oh, like this really play. yeah that's a putter yeah, that's interesting. That's going to be different than most people play it, just it kind of accepting more distance in favor of preserving that good angle. Let's see if it pays off. Oh, Macbeth, just this is totally leaked. Oh, what a but. fortunate kick. He, I don't know if anyone's told him. I don't know if he cares, but that was a surprising misrelease from Macbeth. I'll tell him. This is great. And a soft little skip. I mean, that is prime spot right there. Land on the road. <laughs> uh, 
That's what we want to do here. So this is pretty far back. Trying to work it down towards the tunnel. That's really well done. Yep. Right at the mouth, he'll have about 80 or 90. If and he pushes that a another 30 feet, that left side, or like on the back side of that fairway, is just awful. So very well done there. And this might be tracking in that direction. Another fortunate break for Macbeth. Yeah. But there's a ton of tiny trees. I don't know if they've cleared them out or not, but in the past, it's been really rough on that left side. So here's Ricky with the strategic play. I don't think he's going to love this result. No. Misses his line. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I've covered a lot of Macbeth's rounds, and I think I'm seeing a little something different with this form. I think that might be aiding him a little bit. The, or not aiding, but the hurting injury. Him. Yeah, the hurt. Yes. It seems like he's a little slower off of every tee, and he's throwing shots and discs that I've never seen him throw for those particular shots. Chris trying to get up and down for a nice par. That needs to slow down. Putter still looks pretty good for him. Yep, this is still a birdie look. That would have been the most Macbeth thing he could have possibly done. Two absolute shanks and then a 90-footer for the birdie. Ricky <laughs> in the uh, same he was boat. so ready to walk that in. Almost did make it happen. Chris not doing himself any favors by getting behind that birch. Good catch, Was that though. a beach? I don't, I don't think it's a beach. It's not, it's not a beach tree? Could be. Birch, birch, white birch. I got a question for you guys, and it's a multiple choice question. See, always see. It, is Greg Barsby wearing A, a t shirt? B, a <laughs> raincoat? C, both? C, it's always C. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't figure it out either. I was I was interested in the uh, outfit changes that these guys all had from yesterday to today's continuation of the first round. Didn't know if they would do one of the uh, the Great British Bake Off things where they come back the next day, but they still wear the same outfit. That would have been an interesting choice for one of these players, but nobody went that <laughs> That's route. That's a little harder to do when unless you have access to laundry <laughs> right at the ready because yeah, they're coming off a pretty muddy mucky type of day new new tee pad here on hole 14 brought it to the left introducing a little bit angry angle better angle to get to this pin but the pins actually been pushed back as well this is another bruiser on this course this is the second most difficult hole the forehand flip up is a good play but it doesn't usually get all the way there this is the best play to get somewhere near the green and yeah. that's one of the best shots you're gonna see yeah he's done well there it's just a, a narrow gap this is really nice it's it's the big kick off that center fairway tree that could really bring the bogey or the double bogey into play for people chris has done a good job all the way up there with a the turnover you got to think that's about as much as he's hoping yes. for. yes This misses oh. and it doesn't, but that had the right shape. See, that just seems like a soft little run up for him, for me, from what we're used to with it with his uh, great kick again. Yeah, yeah I mean, but it seems like a shot. gingery little move sure. there. He's shown a, a sort of an incredible ability to make little tweaks like yes. that, I feel like, in his career where something's bugging him. So he's just going to do it different now. And yeah. it still kind of works at an elite level somehow. Well, he's got an outside chance for birdie once again. And once again, just drifting past the basket. Well, to have streaks like, like he has and all the titles, you have to be able to manipulate the body in certain situations to be totally. able to uh, stay at the top, you know? Or stay in contention oh, even as Greg. Greg. We're so used to Greg giving those oh, good runs. Oh, my goodness. That, is, that hurts even more. I mean, he's still got a good chance to save the par, but to go from 60 feet to 28 feet just feels like a slap in the face. And Ricky's going to be taking a bogey. 
Hopefully Greg can avoid that fate with a good putt here. And no, he will drop the stroke. As we watch these guys clean up, sort of another interesting announcement that's been made to the players this morning as these guys are finishing this round is that the tee times and the groups will stay exactly the same for round two. So moving over to the other course, but you're going to play with these same four guys. We're not going to see our traditional lead card and a shuffle of the scores for round two. You're going to stay with your same tee time. And the reason for that is because say somebody was playing in these later groups and having a bad day, they come out here at 7.40 in the morning and then finish their round, say, by 9.30, it's, there's the potential they'd be turning around and teeing off again in just, like, another 45 minutes, and they can't have that. So this way they don't have to wait until the conclusion of this first round in the morning to then set the tee times. The simpler thing is just to keep the pairings all the same, the groups all the same. So we're going to see this same group We've for Jomez round two. Once before this year already. This has been yeah. a very interesting year with the weather. We've had all sorts of things, uh, shortened tournaments, uh, canceled rounds, rounds postponed to the next day, as we've seen here. I mean, this has been a very strange year for weather. I will say that. People playing in the dark, people not allowed to play in the dark. Yeah. Chris Dickerson throwing up absolute Just dart we've seen that shots. a lot this year yeah piping it through the middle this, on the very difficult 15th yeah hole 15 I, I think is one of the scariest 400 footers that you will ever play yeah it's a tight gap and it is an island hole so you have to make it across that little rock wall onto this island which uh, is a pretty big island but it's a tiny gap to yes, get to the is. island and that like that, that is work. a fantastic shot right there anything around circle's edge anything on the island you're kind of yeah. stoked about Totally. Yeah, this is normally uh, the hardest hole in the course, but with the introduction of the new hole eight and the new hole 14, those take the honors for top two most difficult. This falls in the line for third. A 3.21 average is still pretty difficult. I'm pretty surprised that uh, 14 beats this one out, honestly, with all the OB. I just think a natural shot, uh, you can hit this line like right here. This is a great chance to be parked for birdie or at least really close. Call it parked. Get there. So uh, that's a natural shot. That's not a like it's a scary shot. Yes. But a good throw gets you the birdie. Yeah. Whereas on 14, a good throw doesn't give you really anything. I mean, we saw Greg throw a great forehand. He took the aggressive line with the chop forehand down the right side path. Still ended up taking the bogey. Sure. Chris as well. Threw a, threw a pretty good shot there. Greg oh. trying to go back and forth with another birdie, bogey, birdie, bogey, or bogey, birdie, excuse me, but unfortunately just misses. Beautiful. And that breaks a long drought. We're and talking 20 plus hours <laughs> <laughs> without a birdie. Which is maybe like a, a lifetime record for that guy right there. And Ricky had the same. I mean, Ricky's plus one hole. Did you guys see how easy he threw that mid-range? I did. He made it look pretty easy. I mean, he just like kind of flicked it with the wrist. There's and then it was 400 just of them for you. 400 of them, exactly. Pretty impressive stuff there, I think. A good overall score for the car. Two under is pretty impressive. Now we're kind of getting to that slightly easier stretch right at the end that you mm -hmm. kind of teased earlier, Yuli. Uh, certainly 16 and 17 qualify for that. I think maybe the new 18 is middle of the road. It's not exactly easy. Yeah, 16, par 3, 385 down the hill, out of bounds left the whole way by that rock wall. You're going to see a lot of shots come in here early to try to get a skip right through here, but I think the play is to go deep of that gap and try to knock maybe a sidearm into that back area and get yourself a little putt, but really tough to do that because you're going to have to challenge that left side. Let's see what these guys do. Better come out with a little Anheuser. It does. I like it. It's tracking towards those middle ones, though. Yeah. 
choose a side. Choose a yeah, side. Yeah, it's so hard from the T. If you overturn that, you can be OB over the wall. You can also juice this thing long super quick. It's hard to get the right stability and the right height all perfectly locked yeah, down. Yeah, see, that's too low. Yeah, they like should I push just deep. Launching yeah. deep. Still an outside chance. He's going to be 50 feet deep and left. But there are a lot of trees near the basket, so the outside circle putts get more and more difficult to make. Kind of a delicate flex from Chris. It takes a forward-ish kick. He'll have a chance to go for that. This looks like it's committed to the inside line, but it's kind of pushing through everything. Oh, wow. Nearly aces. That's it. Oh, no. That's not, that's not what you deserve with a shot like this. Catch a little metal I mean, in, your, he in the aced bullseye. It with some of the mulch. He did. That was a good mulch shot. Paul's going to give this a bid, but hold on because if he does, which he does miss, it can get some wheels on it. It's fast green. They said, I think, 15 tons of mulch added to the course wow. in the last few weeks. Oh, Ooh, Chris oh, Dickerson. Oh, wow. From Chris. They've had record rains here, so just a big shout out to the grounds crew. It doesn't, uh, 15 tons doesn't move easy. And, and they've been working at this for a full week, if not longer. Oh, uh, much longer. Preparation. I I'm, I'm saying the PDGA crew coming yeah, in. Sure. Yeah, The grounds crew here, oh my gosh, they've been at this for, for months, if not for the whole year since last GMC. Yes. Ricky thought he made that one. There's been a couple this round where Ricky thought he had it mm -hmm. and he was trying to chase them in. So everyone's C2 bid falls short except for Chris with the big flex putt. I'm going to say it. Very slow start for this card. Not what they're looking for at the World Championships. Now, because of the caliber of player that they are, I'm not too worried. But I would say very slow start. You're looking at probably the worst you're trying to shoot is a 7. And I think anything below that, you're feeling disappointed, especially at the level that these guys play at. I think you can still be in contention at the five under range, but you're seeing right now Chris Clemens 11 under with more holes to go. Yeah. Wow. But it is the endurance contest. I mean, we're talking five rounds here. This is the longest tournament we play all year. And if you look at this stretch, Macbeth's been on 10 straight years of top two finishes. There's been times when he was way out of it and just fought his way back in. And by way out of it, I mean like eight or nine strokes back a couple of rounds in. Yes. So I think that if you're staying somewhere in the mix, obviously these guys don't want to fall behind early. Well, I think this is the only group that can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. There's not many There's other, not yeah, very yeah, many sure. groups collectively that you can be like, okay, I'm okay with that. Being eight back is not a good start. <laughs> no. Chris. 17, one of the easier holes in the course. Actually, the easiest, 3.5 average. Goes a little bit long with this. There's still plays from there, but you'd like to see it swing left and follow the road. I believe it was 2015. Macbeth was back somewhere in that eight or nine range. And then Will just went course record, course record, back to back. Yeah. And just found himself right back in the mix. I played with him both of those rounds. Oh, Ricky, if this doesn't flip up, he's going to be dealing with early creek, I'm guessing. Oh, what a kick. Great kick. To the other side of the creek. Yeah, I think he was down by like eight or nine, and then all of a sudden he was up by eight or nine. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was, it was just ridiculous. So fast. Well, I mean, I, you can't not mention the 2014 then, if we're going to talk about sure, that, where sure. Ricky Wysocki, I believe Macbeth was in the middle of taking a quadruple bogey seven on a par three. And. At that point, I think he was like nine back, or eight or nine back of Ricky. With about 22, 23 holes to play. Yeah, and then that was like back that. when they did the final nines. And then Macbeth went like 26 under out of the last 28 holes or something, or 23 out of the last 25, something, something unbelievable. Crazy. Something 26 crazy. out of the last 27. With one eagle. On an impossible hold to eagle. Uh, it, I mean, and that's why you just can't keep, you can't count these guys out ever. No. Little turnover here from Greg. He's been playing this shot really well this this tournament so far. Well done there. That nice soft floaty putter, that is one that he's been able to rely on. And it's just so important to have that shot in the tight woods. 
um, like Brewster. Chris, after the little bit long drive, he's going to have a tricky putt for the birdie. You'll kind of take it for where yeah, he was. I you think know? so. You're in the circle, but it is very tight in there. Wouldn't be surprised at all if he didn't make it. Ricky, Ricky to get to four. Nice putt outside the circle. Kind of needed, needed it. Yeah. 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 Kind of a big moment for him. I, I mean, feel if like if that a, one doesn't go in, maybe full on tilt for the guy. If you're having a bad day and then you don't get 17, I mean, <laughs> yeah. then things really start to, your your worldview also starts to close in a little bit. <laughs> like everything you're kind of thinking about, it's, it's you're kind of expecting oh. to pick this one up. Chris, I don't think it was ob obstructed as it, as it looked from that angle. I think he could have found a clear passage to the basket, and he just missed that one. Yeah, I think that's like the tail of his two putts right now. One, really smooth, and then sometimes they come off like that. We saw him miss a short one earlier as well, very short putt. Yeah, he's missed a few in the circle, and he's still putting together a pretty decent round with a double bogey and missed putts in the circle. So it could have been a lot better for Chris so far, but still five under. It keeps you in it, and Chris Clemens Clemens is in 12. it. Clemens is keeping himself in it. Let's just say that. 12 under, phenomenal. I've, I feel like 12 under is about as good as this course has ever yeah. been shot, and it's way harder now mm -hmm. than it was a couple years ago. All right, are you are you with me here, Nate? Is this the Mugatu tree on the right side here? Oh, I'll give you that. That's sure. the Mr. Mugatu tree. Sure. Those who know, know. All right, but this is the new basket down here to the left side. The shot has changed. I mean, we're still trying to go maybe a hyzer shot over Mugatu, and there's also a new forehand route that is cut on the left side, elevated basket, much more challenging finishing hole. I like this. Yeah, really wide. Find some skip. Get wrecked. Mm, yeah, absolutely wrecked. Missed that one, and he's golden. Yeah, you want to go in between that one that he hit and the other one that was in the light. There's a nice fair way to... Uh, you can push deep like this, and this should skip all the way back. Back, see this? Yeah. Wow. Like over the old basket, and then it kind of comes in super, super tight, skips up there to the circle. Oh. That's, that's an, an interesting, interesting choice. It, what, yeah. What? What? Now to take the backhand through that line. Yeah, that's, wouldn't have thought I would have seen that. I think my favorite play is what Chris is about to do here with the flex. Opens it up right away, and then it kind of feeds in there. That does yeah. seem smart. You know? Now that you mention it, that does seem pretty smart, the way he did that. That was... <laughs> Do you do you buy the four hundred? Do you think it's a full four hundred to the pin? I do. I think at the end, Jerm, it's a little downhill. Okay. I, so it feeds it kind of feeds into this area a little faster, but I, I'm with you. It doesn't seem that far. It seems like they, they get there kind of quick for a four hundred foot hole. That new plastic they're making, man. Yeah, I tell yeah. you, man. Have Dig you heard it. of the destroyer? Man. Oh, just a little stable oh, for Chris. Slow down on the elevated basket coming back for the par. And that's the finish Ricky was needing. That's big. That's huge. Three out of the last four to get to five. If he pars those, red alert. It's not looking good for Rick. That's a good comebacker from Chris. but still only two under for the remainder of the restart day for Ricky Wysocki, which I'm sure is less than what he was looking to get. But a very strange round. I mean, all the delays, the postponement of the round to the next morning, and first round of the World Championships is now officially in the books. And they're all about knotted up. Yeah, thoughts thoughts on the round slow a little slow. slow but you can you can forgive some of that for the all the delays mm -hmm. all the the different starts and and stops that's tricky uh it's a little bit more natural than most of these groups i think they're keeping the same group they all have the same score so hot round for chris clemens though two stroke lead after the first round of the world's we haven't seen that too many times i can imagine i mean it's hard to ever get separation 
after one round, but Chris out of the gates, bogey free 12 under, incredible start. So many players, I mean, we're going down to 23 players are seven under or better. That is a really fantastic start, but so many players at this tournament, 216 of the best in the world are here competing for the coveted title, the world championship. Yeah, I felt like all the superstars were right in that five, four to eight under. Yeah. And that's what we need to look for, like going down the stretch. Can they bridge that gap? Because nine under, last spot on the lead card, Macbeth, Ricky, only four back of that. You did, I mean, so much time. Yeah. A lot Clearly of time. So much time. And left there's not to go. really even a league card going into the final round. It's, I mean, to the next round, it's all going to be the same cards. So the, the first league card we're, we're going to get to see is back here in Brewster for round three. And final thought, we also have a B pool. And the B pool played a couple good rounds at Fox. They're playing opposite courses. So yes. we might be able to see a couple of those guys come in once we do the shuffle and be in the mix as well. Yes. Thanks to the Founders Club. We'll see you for round two. I just wanted to take a moment to dedicate our round one coverage to a friend of mine who passed too soon, Tori Tuft. Uh, just died a couple days ago, and I know it's not much, but just wanted to dedicate our round one coverage to him, uh, a friend of mine that I played with uh, for many years.